Hey guys, Josh Fierstein here. Welcome to Transformation Tuesday, our second installment. Today we're gonna to be talking about something that's very, very close to my heart. That's the subject of rejection. Those of you guys that know my story know that I was actually engaged to a girl that rejected me actually multiple times, left me feeling down, depressed, just totally thrown away, devalued. I, I, I almost felt inhumane. And yet it was that, that that rejection is actually what opened up the doorway to the depression that crept in for almost a year and a half of my life. And, and so today I have with me one of my good, good friends. He is a, uh, he's been a certified counselor, has a master's degree for over 33 years. He's helped people like myself and you. Uh, being that my inbox is constantly flooded with people that are dealing with these issues, I wanted to bring him on today for a special edition of Transformation Tuesday. Now look, I understand that one of the building blocks of our life, the foundation, is our childhood. Good and one, one thing that I find today is that a lot of kids are dealing with these issues at a young age. Talk to us a little bit about that. Well, and as you mentioned, I've been a counselor for decades now, and there isn't a week go by in my counseling practice that I don't have somebody come into my office suffering from childhood rejection. Mm. And uh, the, the main point of rejection is, in a child, it usually comes in and settles into the soul during periods of great disappointment or trauma. Mm. And that's why the child abuse and parent, uh, verbal abuse and physical abuse is so dangerous to a child because they're kind of like emotional sponges mm -hmm. and if you abuse a child they absorb it quickly and easily. Mm -hmm. Once that sense of rejection enters the child's soul it stays for life unless they're the Lord heals it. You know, it's, it's actually interesting that you talk about it staying for life because the Bible actually talks about how it is that a man, how his children are like arrows in his quiver, which means that when he pulls those arrows out it's him that begins to direct. And so one of the parents' roles and responsibilities is they're setting that child in a direction that it's going to go for the rest of their life. And yet I think that oftentimes we're very, very careless about that, particularly even in issues of divorce. I find people that use the kids as pawns and yes. they end up being so wounded and they're the casualty of war. Yes. They're the ones that really, really get hurt. And you're saying that that stays with them for life. Unless, unless they're cured or healed by the Lord. The major problem we have here in America is we have so many blended families now. Mm -hmm. you know, the divorce rate's over 50%. And uh, so many families come together and they don't, they're, they're stepdads, stepmoms, half, half brothers, half sisters. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the step parents and the blended families don't treat the children as their own. Mm -hmm. And the, the child growing up in that kind of situation often senses deep seated rejection that they keep for the rest of their lives. It also includes. Uh, the rejection thing also leads to depression, long-term clinical depression. You know what, isn't it interesting that we have so many people today that are suffering, I mean, even people at young ages, and, and you know, the one thing about depression is it goes beyond every bo boundary and border of race, of class, of, of, of you know how much somebody makes. The one thing that I find is that you have people that are committing suicide that, that are celebrities. They have everything at their fingertips. You would think that they would have happiness, and yet a lot of them, what you find is when you go into their past, you find that they have a lot of troubled childhoods, that, you, that they have a lot of rejection issues, and they write about it in their suicide uh, the, the letters. So how is it, if you're talking to somebody today, that is dealing with rejection from their past. How would you encourage them? How would you instruct them to begin to break those ties? The key to getting healed from that is to recognizing now who you are in Christ as mm. opposed to who you were when you were younger mm. and you were rejected. That's good. Because God is an unconditional lover and under no circumstances, whether you're failing or you're successful, are you ever rejected by the Lord. And if you can get the person to review or revisit their own personal identity, that's a major step toward healing. You know, it's interesting because we're talking about parents, and yet it is that when we become born again in Christ Jesus, we now have a heavenly Father that actually gives us a brand new identity. Yes. And so when we have that new identity and when we can view ourselves, in fact, the uh, one thing that I was even thinking about today, the Bible talks about love each other as you love yourself, but you cannot give to somebody else what you yourself do not possess. And oftentimes what I find is that these people that are walking through life with rejection issues, they end up passing those things off to other people. They end up being a perpetrator of those things themselves. And so they find that relationships are falling apart around them, all because in their childhood, they were dealing with these, the, these issues. Exactly, and that's one of the major symptoms of, of an individual that comes in for counseling. 
if you'll look at their history, generally speaking, they have a series of broken relationships. Mm. Family, relatives, <laughs> employment, numerous marriages, mm. and that's always a symptom of the spirit of rejection. Well, I want you to know today that Jesus Christ took your rejection on the cross on his back. He's the one that took that stood there and took your rejection, your humiliation, your sin, your depression. He took it all on his back on that cross for you. So I want you to know he's already been rejected so you don't have to feel that way. And if you want to talk about love and you want to talk about value, he loves and values you so much that he died on the cross for your sins that you could be filled with his spirit, that you could have joy, regeneration, newness of life, that you can live with hope. And so today I want you to make that decision. In fact, I want to say just a quick prayer as we close and I want to pray over you on this Transformation Tuesday that that's exactly what would happen. Heavenly Father, I stand in agreement with Mike and I just ask that at this very moment that anybody watching God I just pray that the power of the Holy Ghost would begin to move in their life God I pray if there's depression or darkness anything God that has flooded their soul Lord I pray that this very moment that the light and the hope and the love of God, of God himself Lord the same God that died on a cross for us God that it would transform that it would release them of all of the bitterness the hurt and all of the rejection we pray in Jesus name believing these things and we believe, we believe, we believe that you are the rewarder of those that love you and diligently seek you. And so, God, we ask that you do these things today in the wonderful name of Jesus. Now, Thank what you, I want you to do is I want you to click the link below. We're going to put a link there to Mike's website. Again, he's a counselor for 33 years. He wants to give everybody on this page absolutely free counseling, either him or one of the counselors that work with him. We want to do that as our gift to you. So, God bless you guys. Click him. Follow him on Facebook. If you're not my friend already on Facebook, click my name at the top of the video. Let's be friends. And as always, the only way that this message gets around the world is if you click share on the side or the bottom of this video. Share it with somebody that can be helped by the powerful transforming truths that he's given us today. God bless you guys. Have a beautiful Transformation Tuesday.